I think the entire waits for. Monday night at 10.30, Channel 9 presents the second of the Tournament of Roses Parade. So on January 1st, 1890, the first Rose Parade was held. Progress was not always welcomed. January 1st, 1901 featured the first automobile in the parade. Over See, the subject is roses, Monday night at 10.30, here on Channel 9. Beauty, excitement, and adventure, it's all a part of Untamed World, Saturday at 5.30. The Rams Coaches Show is being brought to you in part by your Southern California Buick Oval Dealers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Coaches Show with the head coach of the Los Angeles Rams, Chuck Knox, as we wrap up what has been a very successful 1973 season. I know I'm not going to make any points with the head coach by saying it was a successful season because he was hoping and looking, and justifiably so, for a shot at that Super Bowl. Chuck, it was a heartbreaker. I, uh, I don't know how to tell it to you, but uh, you and the boys really had to take that one tough. Well, it certainly was a tough uh, loss for us to, to suffer, but I was real proud of the way our players came back after we were down 17 to nothing. When we got back to 17 to 16, I thought we had a chance to uh, win the football game, and of course they came on and made that big play to Barry Pearson, and that was the ball game. Well, as I said, the newspaper quotes, both Pierce and McMillan said they thought they had the interception. It was so close, yet it was just Boy, I don't think he could have cut it any finer, but it was a fine catch. Yes, it was. We were in a perfect coverage. We were in a zone, and they were trying to hit a post pattern, a deep post pattern. And usually uh, those type of patterns, uh, you usually get them picked off or they're incomplete. Looking ahead, and that, of course, is what you have to do now, Chuck, what uh, was the general conversation among the ball club, I mean, after the game. I know they were heartbroken, as they always have to be in a tough one like that, but were they really looking forward to next year? Was it a question of being too soon? Well, I think that, uh, number one, they were very disappointed that uh, we didn't win, as we all are. Mm -hmm. But number two, I think that they felt that uh, we've made a tremendous amount of progress this year. They're looking forward uh, to next year. They can see that uh, with hard work and with the type of preparation, type of concentration that uh, we had this year, we can use this year as a base to build on and go on from here. Well, they say you're supposed to pay your dues in the NFL before you get into that championship. Don Shula, perhaps, is a great testimony to that fact. But we'll be right back to take a look at that Dallas ball game and some of the outstanding plays with the head coach right after this word. Opel is the best-selling car in Germany. And here's one of the reasons why. Introducing the new Opel Manta Luxus. It has a 1.9 liter engine for people who demand economy and conditions that demand performance. There's a fully synchronized four-speed transmission, rack and pinion steering, and front disc brakes. An interior with reclining corduroy bucket seats. See the Opel Manta Luxus at your Buick Opel dealer. This is American Savings with assets over $4 billion with capital and reserves over twice legal requirements. American Savings is paying the new high interest on insured savings, compounded daily, with maximum free services. Remember, you never lose. You always gain at the giant American Savings. Open or transfer your account now. Come to American Savings, safe since 1885. We're open Saturdays. Even Pontiac doesn't make a perfect automatic transmission. So, it might be helpful to know, Amco Transmission serviced 55,440 Pontiacs last year. That's more proof. Nobody knows automatic transmissions better than Amco. This announcement was brought to you by the Amco dealers of Southern California. See the yellow pages or the white pages for the address of the Amco Center nearest you. If you visited San Diego, know what you could do? Breathe fresh air on miles of golf courses and beaches.
such fun spots as San Diego Zoo, SeaWorld, San Diego's new wild animal park, and nearby Mexico. Or you could visit San Diego and do nothing but breathe fresh air. You'd probably never lose a football game if you had hindsight, if you were able to look ahead and see what would happen. Chuck, I don't ever remember a football team in a very important game starting with more of a deficit than you did in that first minute. Well, the first play of the game, we came out uh, throwing the football, and of course, uh, we had that intercepted. And then on the second play of the game, why, we ran a live tackle play and fumbled and turned the ball over to Dallas. So two plays, uh, two turnovers, and very, very shortly with less than six minutes gone in the game, we're behind 14 to nothing. And you don't very often spot a ball club like Dallas 14 points and beat them, although the Rams sure made them worry a lot. The play that Jordan made the interception, John said in the paper, he was quoted as saying that uh, Jordan made a fine play on it, that he just lost him. Now, perhaps let me clarify that because Chuck is going to show it. From the quarterback position, when he comes out on that play, you say, well, my Lord, how could he miss a guy who weighs 235 or 45 pounds and very close to a receiver? You don't realize the action that's going on in front of that quarterback. He does not have what you would call a completely wide open field of vision. There's a lot of movement and a lot of people. He obviously missed Jordan. Well, uh, Leroy Jordan made a, made a great play. The ball was thrown just a little bit behind uh, Bob Klein. Well, let's take a look at it if you uh, want to turn your stomach over again, because I know you've seen it several times. But here was the play, the first rough break the Rams got on the first offensive play of the ball game. John Hale right here, coming out on a sprint out type of pass. You see Bob Klein is open. Ball still just a little bit behind him. There's Leroy Jordan making the interception. Jordan's had a great year, hasn't he? He had a super year. There is Lawrence McCutcheon. An off tackle play. He gets caught here. The tackle by D.D. Lewis and Pat Toomey. Defensive end and defensive weak linebacker, and the ball pops out. Here again, two plays, and we've turned the ball over two times. Well, that's some kind of a deficit to start off an important ball game with. But we came right back and started to move the football. Here's first and ten, Jimmy Bertelson. Behind excellent blocking. It's up 12 yards. Did you have a feeling before the game, Chuck, that the kids were tight at all, the players? No, I didn't think we were uh, tight. I thought we were ready to play. Here again is McCutcheon, moving very well on the ground. He moved very well on the first two downs, but you had trouble with that third one, didn't you? Third down, we had a lot of trouble with. This is the type of thing that happened to us. Here's the swing pass to Lawrence McCutcheon out here. Plenty of room, an excellent call, real fine call by John Hale. He cut up the yard short. Real fine hitting by Dallas. Field goal attempt. Nobody probably felt worse, perhaps you, than David Ray on those shots. Well, David Ray made an awful lot of kicks for us all year. to McCutcheon in the flat that was a little high. And here again is the third down play that we didn't make. It's Calvin Hill up the middle. Real fine tackle there. And Dave Elmendorf <clears throat> knocks the ball out. Covered by Isaiah Robertson. And again, real fine pass protection. John Hato can't find anybody open, so he decides to scramble. Again, real fine pass protection. There's a third down pass. And again, we're unsuccessful. Boy, there are a lot of close ifs in that ball game, I'll tell you. They're getting another field goal attempt. Again, this one was no good.
John Hadel on faking me out. A real fine pass here. Big to Harold Jackson. Harold makes a real nice run here. Duck Sunder almost gets away. Well, Cornell Green catches him from behind. There's a drop play. This is a third down play that has been successful in the past. We just uh, really didn't get the type of execution that we'd like to have and are unsuccessful. Again, we try a 33-yard field goal. And this time it's good. We'll find reception by Dave Elmendorf. Well, we're going to have to call a haul a minute if we can, Coach, because of that fine interception of Elmendorf. There's one way. The Rams had the breaks at times, but it was just one of those things of not being able to capitalize. That's what it uh, really was. Uh, we turned the ball over, and then uh, we had drives going, and uh, then we missed field goals, and it was just uh, a question Everything of just missed a little short. Just, just one of those games. Chuck's going to come back with his guest for tonight, who is an old friend of ours and one of the top coaches and certainly one of the top scouts and guys who recognize football talent, Jack Faulkner, who works on the Rams as one of the special coaches. And we'll be back with that segment for you right after this word. Opel is the best-selling car in Germany. And here's one of the reasons why. Introducing the new Opel Manta Luxus. It has a 1.9-liter engine for people who demand economy and conditions that demand performance. There's a fully synchronized four-speed transmission, rack and pinion steering, and front disc brakes. An interior with reclining corduroy bucket seats. See the Opel Manta Luxus at your Buick Opel dealer. And Teledyne Packard Bell created a new line of 100% solid-state color TVs. We knew that simplicity in design would mean dependability in operation. So we created a unique chassis with five solid-state modules for longer life, added three more solid-state plug-in modules for easy service, and the brightest, sharpest picture tube ever made. Plus one green button for total color control. Telemagic 100 by Teledyne Packard Bell. So automatic, all you do is turn it on. Tonight at 7.30, Glenn Ford, Charles Boyer, and Yvette Memio star in the tense drama, The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. It's a strange thing, Heinrich. I never before associated you personally with murder. We do not murder members of the French resistance. We execute them. See The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse tonight at 7.30 here on Channel 9. Share a nostalgic look at past Rose Bowls on The Subject is Roses, Monday night at 10.30. It takes a heap of shopping to make a house a home. And when you shop, you want to buy right. That's what we're here for. We're the Better Business Bureau. Our members follow a strict set of rules that ensure fair play for their customers. So wherever you shop, whatever you buy, look for this emblem. It means you're not alone. took his team to the division title. Then he led the Vikings to the win over the Washington Redskins by seven points last week. And another superb afternoon for the 13-year veteran from Georgia. Wayne Walker, any additional comments that we didn't make during the course of the action? Well, you know, we get a little carried away. Things were working so well for the Vikings today. Uh, their precision and everything was really good, but I think we didn't point out that they really out hit the Cowboys in every phase of the game. Whenever a, a ball was cut in their secondary, they were really laying the leather to people. And, you know, you really have to get back to the basics of football. And it, it is hustling and it is hitting. And they really hit today. The Vikings came up with 21 first downs. And they went over 300 yards, 305 yards in total offense against the Dallas team. And you just know that they missed Bob Lillian and Greg Hill. 
but that doesn't detract from the accomplishment of the Minnesota team today. Well, Calvin Hill being out of there certainly hurt the Cowboys, but uh, as you said, you can't take anything away from Minnesota. I, I doubt it would have made a difference uh, winning or losing the ball game had Calvin Hill been there because of the performance that uh, the Vikings turned out today. The first time they had the ball, they kept it for nine minutes, and Fred Cox kicked a field goal. We have player interviews coming up, and I'm sure you'll enjoy hearing not only what the winners, the Vikings, have to say, but also the losers, the Cowboys, and our friend Jack Whitaker is down on the playing field. Thank you very much, Jack Buck and Wayne Walker and Pat Summerall. You won't believe it, but the last Cowboy just a second ago went up this tunnel. They left this field very, very slowly, very reluctantly. I think it took the Minnesota Vikings about three seconds for all of them to be up and whooping up in that winning dressing room where we'll be going in a moment. Another thing here, this big Texas stadium was uh, almost half empty with about two minutes left to play here as the fans in Dallas here had given up already on the Cowboys. We'll be talking with uh, all the heroes, and there certainly were 22 of them at least on the Minnesota Vikings, and we'll have a word or two from the Cowboys too in just a moment. Brent Musburger is standing by, and we'll return to the winning dressing room here at the NFL Championship in just a moment. Five's blue plastic clean top carrier seals out anything that could mess up the top of your can. If unique is what you seek, Colt 45 malt liquor. When the Dutch master's tobacco buyer comes to Colombia, South America, he visits tobacco dealers like me, Lorenzo Hernandez, and he buys the top grades of tobacco we have to sell. Dutch masters also buys the best grades of tobacco from Brazil, Puerto Rico and Santo Domingo, as well as Colombia. Since Dutch Masters buys the best tobacco, they must make a very good cigar. NBC.